Welcome back to my channel everyone. I hope you're all doing great. Today we're going to learn all about classifying triangles and if you haven't watched the video right before this it's called classifying quadrilaterals and that can really help a lot too with geometry. So I hope you enjoy it and let's dig in. All right everyone so we are going to be learning about like I said classifying triangles and before we get started, we just need to talk a little bit about vocabulary. So, of course, triangles are three-sided shape. That tri means three. So, three-sided shape. Okay, and classifying just means to put them into categories. And we're going to be working with something called a hierarchy. And if you watched my classifying quadrilaterals video, we learned all about what this means, but I'll go ahead and mention it again. So it's just a way of organizing things and it can be math related or not math related. And it's a way of organizing things from um, least specific to most specific. And there are branches that get more and more specific. I'll show you my example that's non-math related, um, that's all about different types of dog breeds, so that you can kind of get the hang of what hierarchy means. Then we can start putting triangles into a hierarchy. Okay, so here's my example that's actually from my last video. So go back and check out the classifying quadrilaterals if you want more detail, but this one pretty much just goes from the general European dog breeds down to more specific. And it just shows you that there are different types of breeds like herding, hound, sporting, and working. And then within those categories, there are specific types of dogs that fall under those categories. Okay, so before we get started, Let's just look at a few triangles and talk about how we could describe these. What are some things that might make triangles easy to classify? Okay, so you might have mentioned that we could talk about the angles. Okay, that's great. So we could maybe classify these based on what types of angles it has. Okay, we'll dig into that in just a minute. You might have also said we can talk about their sides. Okay, you might have heard people um, classify them based on how many sides are congruent or equal. Okay, we'll talk all about that too. So there's actually two different ways that we can classify triangles. Okay, so let's start talking about sides. I like to um, do, you know, one thing at a time so we don't get confused. So when we're talking about sides, we're gonna be looking for how many of the sides are congruent. I'm gonna write that word down, congruent. And you might've heard that before. It just means same size, same shape. So for lines, it just is going to mean the same, same length. Okay, so this first triangle, I'm seeing that all of the sides look equal or congruent. So that one has a special name. That one is called an equilateral triangle. So you can kind of, you might be able to guess how we're going to show our hierarchy because, you know, triangle is such a broad general term, but if I call something an equilateral triangle, that is a lot more specific. Okay, let's look at this next triangle. So I see that two of the sides look equal. And that third side is longer. So it just has two congruent sides. And that has a special name 
called an isosceles triangle. It's kind of a fun word to say, isosceles. Okay, and then the last triangle, it has no congruent sides. They're all different lengths. And that one is called a scalene triangle. These all have kind of interesting names. So equilateral has three congruent sides. Isosceles has two congruent sides. Scalene has zero congruent sides. All right, so now we're going to think about angles and how we could classify these triangles using their angles. So we have got three different types of angles that I should mention before we really get started, just to make sure we have that vocabulary. So there are small angles. There are right angles or uh, square corner. Okay, and then there are larger angles. Okay, does anybody know some of the names of these angles? Okay, you might have remembered that this one right here, the smaller than a square corner is called acute. And I like to say acute little angle to help me remember. Then this one is a right angle or 90 degrees. Um, or you might have, you know, when you were younger, you might have called it a square corner. And then we have the larger than 90 degrees or obtuse. And sometimes I like to say obtuse as a moose. Okay, so we've got acute, less than 90, right is 90, obtuse is greater than 90. Okay, so now all you have to do is take a look at the triangles, see if we can spot um, what we could call some of these triangles. So let's first start with this triangle right here. What types of angles does it have? It actually has three of the same type of angle. Okay, great. It has acute angles. So it makes sense to call it an acute triangle. So that would be another specific name for that triangle is an acute triangle, also an equilateral triangle. Okay. Now let's take a look at this isosceles triangle and see if we have another word for it that matches the angles. So what type of angles do you see for this triangle? Okay, great. It has a right angle and it's also got two acute angles. So what do you think we should call it? Okay, great. I would say since it has that special right angle, let's call it a right triangle. We really can't call it an acute, I know it has two acute angles, but we can't call it an acute triangle because that would make us think of this one over here that has all acute. So since this one has that special right angle, 90 degrees, let's just call it that then. Okay, and let's move on to this one. Do you see the different types of angles on this scalene triangle? Okay, great. You're noticing that there's an obtuse one up here and then two acute. So what should we call this, this one? Okay, great. An obtuse triangle makes the most sense because it's got that one special obtuse angle so we might as well call it the obtuse triangle all right so i've made two different sections for making a hierarchy of triangles this first one let's start with sides what do you think i could put on the three branches to show specific, more specific, examples of triangles. 
Okay, great. Maybe you thought of, if we're talking about sides, that there's an equilateral. So all three sides are congruent. Okay, there's also an isosceles which means we learned two sides are congruent. What would that third one be? Okay, great, scalene. Okay, and then, and, and again, that means that zero sides are congruent. Now we can move on to this other hierarchy and talk about angles. There were also three types of triangles that we can describe with their angles. So what do you think? What would go there to show some more specific examples? Okay, great. A lot of you said acute. Okay, I heard a, a right angle or right triangle and obtuse. Okay, great job. All right, so the other thing we need to be able to do is take a look at a triangle and classify it based on its sides and angles and come up with different names for it. Okay, so I want you to take a look at this one and think if there's a word for classifying it based on its angle measure. So let's take a look at its angle measure or types of angles. Okay, great. You might have thought about how all three angles are what kind of angles? Okay, great. Acute. So we could call it an acute triangle. And there, there is another more specific way we could classify it too, based on its side length or how many of the sides are congruent. So what do you think? Okay, you might be noticing that these are all the same. They're all eight centimeters. So that means it's also equilateral. All right, so with both quadrilaterals and triangles, we can also classify them in Venn diagrams, so I wanted to make sure to include one of those. So this Venn diagram is a little bit interesting because it just has two sections. The bigger circle is the most broad or general, kind of like, you know, when we're talking about a hierarchy with branches, it would be up at the top. So triangle is the biggest circle. And then the smaller circle inside says isosceles triangles. So these are the most specific in this Venn diagram. So some of these shapes belong in the more specific category, the isosceles. Some of these shapes uh, belong in just, they're just another type of triangle. So let's try to figure this out. So remember that an isosceles triangle has two sides that are the same. So do you see any that have two sides the same? Okay, great. You might have noticed right away D has these two sides are the same. Do you notice those little um, marks that I'm making? Those can help you to see that this side is the same as this side, but this side is different, okay? Some of them have some different symbols. This side is different than this one with two lines, and this one has three marks, so that all sides are different there. Okay, so we're gonna put shape D goes in the more specific category. I'm going to cross that one out. Okay, do you see any others like that? Oh, you might have noticed E has two sides that are marked the same, and then the third side is different. Okay, so it has two sides that are the same. Okay, and do you see any that have 
no sides the same. You know, they definitely do not fall in the isosceles triangles category. Okay, good. So you probably noticed A has every side is different. We're going to put that up here. It is still a triangle, but it's just not an isosceles triangle. Okay, do you see another shape that has no sides the same? Okay, great. C is also a triangle, but not, it cannot be described as having two sides the same. Okay, now here's a tricky one. B is the only one left, and it's not like A and C where it has no sides the same. Does it have at least two sides that are the same? Oh, okay. Well, yes, it does because it actually has three sides, so it does have at least two sides that are congruent. So I'm going to include it here even though we know it could also be considered an equilateral triangle, it could also be called an isosceles because the definition is two sides the same. And it does have at least two sides the same. All right, great job, guys. That was a good example of classifying triangles in a little bit of a different way. And I think now that you are ready to look at any shape you know, triangle or quadrilateral, and start to classify them based on some different attributes. All right, so I hope you learned a lot. I hope you feel a lot better about classifying triangles, and I hope this helps you on maybe an upcoming lesson in your class this year. All right, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.